Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today at Turnpot Health and Wellness. Today we're going to be going over adrenal health. We'll be talking about adrenal down regulation, or more commonly known in the mainstream media as adrenal fatigue. We'll be going over some adrenal physiology, we'll be talking about tips on how to correct and heal your adrenals, and then we'll be talking about if testing is right for you and if you should be doing it. So let's dive in. So the adrenal symptoms. How do I know if I have adrenal downregulation or adrenals are even a problem? Typically, you're going to be noticing that we have a lot of fatigue. We have almost chronic low energy. You notice from uh, what we consider like orthostatic hypotension or vertigo, which is basically laying down or from a seated or laying position and then you stand up and you notice you get dizzy. That can be influenced by the adrenals. If we have uh, just low, low blood pressure, and when we rise, it doesn't increase when we rise. That's another indication that the adrenals aren't working correctly. Uh, if we're constantly getting sick and having colds, flus, viruses, that's another important aspect of the adrenals that helps us. If we're having difficulty losing weight, that's really important and tied into adrenals, which we'll talk about in its relation to cortisol. Unexplained food cravings, that's another one uh, that can also be tied into cortisol. And then if we're having hormone irregularities, if we notice increased acne, if we notice irritability, mood swings, things that are just um, not lining up with normal your normal health in the past. So the ultimate question is, why me? Why am I the one with the adrenal fatigue? Well, we, everyone has a stress bucket, and unfortunately, the stress bucket varies in size from person to person. And we have, you know, typical people, some typical people might have more stress than other typical people. Uh, these stressors can be anything from home stress, marital stress, uh, your kid possibly stressing you out, uh, work stress, and then getting into more of the chemical responses, whether it be pathogens, viruses, various bacteria, dysbiosis, uh, shift in chemical balance, exposure to increased chemicals through our nutrition. These are all aspects that can fill our stress bucket. And once that stress bucket is maxed out, it starts pouring out and the adrenals become overwhelmed and the adrenals are the first point that get hit and take the, uh, take the brunt of it, so to speak. So that's kind of, you know, connecting the dots on why you might be the one. And we'll talk about some tips on how to empty that stress bucket. So I like the analogy here uh, to connect why the adrenals, you know, fatigue, similar to the connection in our TV. So we have a wire that connects to the TV that runs the cable in, right? Well, what's happening here is the connection is becoming so overwhelmed that we're just cutting it. The body says, let's cut that connection. I'm so fatigued, I'm so overwhelmed. But there's various spots that that connection can be cut, which we'll talk about in a second. So what we need to do in this analogy is rewire the TV. So if we correct the, correct the, the rewiring and we now can plug the wire back into the TV, we get that signal. So that's the same thing that kind of happens with our adrenals is cutting that wire. And we'll talk about it right now what that means. So here we have our proverbial wire that's connecting to our TV. So our wire will be anywhere from the hypothalamus to the antipituitary, and then our TV is considered like the adrenal cortex. So this is what happens. We have a signal come in, whether it be a stress response, whether we're running from that proverbial tiger because we're always on the go, 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 and we have that chronic fight or flight response, which again, fatigues the adrenals, another aspect, going back to filling the stress bucket. So we have our stimulus, whether it be you're late for work. If that's, that stress response goes into the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone. This is a chemical that is sends to the anterior pituitary, which is in the lower part of the brain. The hypothalamus is in the upper region of the brain, and then it signals the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then now says, okay, I need to release something called ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Then finally, that signal gets to the TV, which is the adrenal cortex, and releases 
a couple things. The first one that's pretty popular is cortisol. Cortisol can do multiple things here. It's really important for regulating our blood sugar, so therefore we can have excessive food uh, cravings. It's considered a glucocorticosteroid, the key part of that being glucose, so it raises our blood sugar and we can get uh, altered food cravings like I previously mentioned. Also, it's really important in regulating our secretory IgA, which is considered like our first barrier of defense to invaders, pathogens, virus, bacteria, dysbiotic events. So if our cortisol isn't regulated, therefore our secretory IgA is, um, is not regulated either, and we're being more susceptible to various cold flus and infections. Also, cortisol is very important in balancing our weight. So it's important in releasing uh, either insulin or glucose. It's very tied and uh, tightly regulated with those two chemicals. So it's very important in balancing our our weight. So if we have excessive amount of cortisol, we are constantly releasing blood sugar into our bloodstream and therefore storing excess blood sugar into the adip adipose tissue causing increased weight gain. On the other hand, if we don't have an if we don't have enough cortisol, we tend to get those blood sugars and overeat blood sugar cravings and overeat. Also, cortisol is really important for bone remodeling. Very important, just like in any life cycle, we need to build up and break down. Cortisol is considered a catabolic hormone, so that means it's going to cause breakdown. And it's going to break down some of the bone, but it's going to help. It's important because the bone needs that in order to remodel. Lastly, it's really helpful with cell signaling. It helps to release or respond in the presence of mRNA, which is our messenger, which is a messenger signal to make our to help make our DNA. So as you can tell, cortisol has multiple influences. Some other things that are released from the adrenal cortex are going to be our aldosterone. And this tightly regulates our blood pressure and this is why we can feel dizzy and and have um, vertigo issues. Lastly, we release our androgens. These are considered our sex hormones, whether it be estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. These all influence our hormones and how we develop. And so that's how we can tie this into uh, hormone shifts and irregularities and, and influences in energy, acne, uh, shift in, in mood are all can be tied into our sex hormones. But really important that along this pathway that the wire can be cut at any point. So a lot of people get tied into just looking at the TV only, which would be the adrenals. But we have to make sure that the hypothalamus is signaling to the anterior pituitary and that the anterior pituitary is signaling to the adrenal cortex. So we want to make sure we focus on all three aspects that we're looking at the cord or the wiring and the TV. So some adrenal tips. Most importantly, before you do anything else, at the base of your pyramid should be nutrition. Making sure we're having healthy nutrients, we're having good adequate of our macronutrients, making sure that they're clean sourced macronutrients, whether they're grass fed, grass finished, getting them from a, uh, from a good farmer or getting them, making sure that they're non-GMO and that we're not eating a high diet and processed foods. Really important with that. I tend to lean towards more of a ketogenic, so a little bit of a higher fat content, a moderate protein content, and a low carbohydrate content. That's kind of where I feel comfortable. Yours may vary, but it's a good start. Uh, the next tip here, arguably probably just as important as nutrition, is getting enough sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're already you know, fighting this battle with one, one arm tied behind your back. So really important that we're getting that eight hours of sleep, that we throw that sleep machismo to the side of getting only four hours and running off four hours of sleep. In order to stimulate growth hormone, we need to sleep. But if cortisol is elevated at night, it's going to inhibit our growth hormone. 
So really important that we get those eight hours and we allow the body to recover. Hydration, super crucial. Taking off some stress of the adrenals for the release of aldosterone. Making sure you're having about half your body weight in fluid ounces. I'm 200 pounds, so I want roughly around 100 pounds in fluid ounces of, of water. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's a goal to shoot for. You might not get there every day, but that's something that you should be trying to achieve every day. If you want to add a little bit of salt into your water, a little pink Himalayan salt or uh, Celtic sea salt, these are all good sources just uh, to help take, again, stress off the adrenals. These all are going to be tips. They're going to help the adrenals to repair, heal, and recover, and just take a little bit of stress and workload off the adrenals. Avoiding caffeine past noon. This is really important because if you're drinking caffeine pe past noon, it's going to, again, stimulate, upregulate the adrenals. Also, they tend to bind with ATP receptor sites in the brain. So now we're not having as much energy or we don't have the ability to use as much energy because these the caffeine molecules are now attaching to the ATP receptor sites in the brain. So a really good point. I'm not saying don't drink your coffee. You can have that in the morning. But if we get pat, you know, close to noon, one o'clock, we should not be uh, influencing the adrenals in the body with another stimulant. Add some adaptogens. So these are going to be really important for the brain aspect, the wire aspect. These are really important in kind of reconnecting the circuitry and getting the signal to to fire again, so to speak. So really important, some good adaptogens would be Luthro, Rhodiola, Asian Ginseng, Ganoderma. These, all of these, uh, Cordyceps is another one. All of these adaptogens are going to be very helpful in reconnecting that circuitry. Lastly, correct exercise prescription. We're in this realm today where where we need to exercise every single day and drive our body into the ground. Exercise prescription is key. If you are adrenally fatigued or have significant adrenal downregulation, you're only going to be making the issue worse. So doing some yoga, maybe doing some light anaerobic exercise, which would be consist of weightlifting, uh, anything that's going to be anaerobic is going to be a little bit easier on the adrenals than aerobic exercise, which would be your you know, mile or two long run or a run for 45 minutes. So typically during this phase of healing the adrenals, I suggest anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes and something nice and light or at least something in the anaerobic with moving weights and using your body weight. If you need to start at 10, 15 minutes, about three times a week or two times a week to start, that's a good starting point, especially if you're in adrenal fatigue. Lastly, another tip that's not on here, melatonin is very significant to basically take the workload off the adrenals. Melatonin, a lot of people think of it as for sleep. Um, it helps to influence sleep because it, it takes the stress off the adrenals and releasing cortisol. If we release cortisol, cortisol kind of keeps you, uh, creates that wired and tired effect. So you're tired all day, suddenly your head hits the pillow and you can't, you know, you can't shut your brain off and go to sleep. That's tightly regulated with cortisol and, and melatonin helps to negate that, that effect or that symptom by down regulating the adrenals and letting them kind of relax and repair. Uh, it's too large. Melatonin is too large of a molecule to cross the blood-brain barrier, so it directly doesn't influence the brain. So a lot of people may think, oh, it's influencing my brain. That's why I'm being able to sleep better. Too large of a molecule. Really, it's mainly working on the adrenals to down-regulate them and to stop working in overdrive, so to speak, and releasing a constant stream of cortisol. So should I be testing? Am I the, you know, do I need to test? So I always rather have quantitative values. I always rather assess rather than guess. I don't want to be throwing things on the wall and hoping they stick. So if you sounds like you're someone that has this adrenal downregulation and you are in adrenal fatigue, I would definitely reach out to myself or another practitioner and get the testing done. We're able to test 
all the connections from the adrenocorticotropic hormone, from the cortisol, the DHEA, pregnenolone, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, melatonin. These are all markers that will be able to assess the function of the TV and also the function of the wiring to that TV. So make sure you know you know what's going on and you can also track how you're progressing in your recovery to health. So really important. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate your time with me. And if you know anyone that can benefit from this information, please share this with them. And if you want to reach out to me and get some testing done and repair those adrenals, please click the link below. And I look forward to talking to you at our next appointment. Have a great day.